everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons From An Old Quilt. So this week we're gonna talk about this really cool quilt that I got at a flea market. I paid $10 for it and this quilt is enormous. It is 86 by 96 inches and it's just stunning. So let's dive in and take a closer look at this magnificent quilt. Oh, there's so much to talk about with this incredible quilt and it's hard to get it onto the screen because it is uh, so large and the motifs are quite big too, but I'm going to give it a shot. So the first thing that we notice, of course, are the two colors. Uh, this is a mint green stitching on a white cotton background. Now, typically these are purchased in kits and these kits have been available for many, many years. Uh, you can even buy them today and usually you get a stamped block and then you put these blocks together to make a quilt. However, with this one, what's unique about it and which really baffled me a little bit to the point that I actually re reached out to some of my friends that are much more of an expert in this field than I uh, to talk about it because this was done in strips uh, and the strips aren't evenly placed. So it's not like the maker bought a kit that was all like, you know, 10 inch strips and then sewed them together. Uh, the strips are not uniform. So for example, we see one strip here, the, the seam for it, and the next one is 16 and a half inches later. And then the next one is 34 inches later. And then the next one is eight inches later. So they're not uniform strips. And uh, I find that interesting because I'm not quite sure how this maker made this. I don't even know if it was from a kit. I assume it was, but who knows? Uh, so the strips are hand stitched together, which is also really incredible and meticulously done. And the embroidery or the cross stitch motifs are so beautifully done too. Now I haven't found any evidence of the, the stamp underneath, although uh, I assume that's the way it was put together. Uh, just because they are so perfect and even. If you have any ideas on how this could have happened, please let me know. So we do have this, this motif of this flower with the daisy in the middle and then a smaller daisy here. And then along the um, center medallion, you see some cross stitch that looks almost like lace. And then we have these beautiful, beautiful borders. So it's a really beautiful quilt, nicely done, super soft and just wonderful. So of course you can't talk about this without talking about the incredible quilting. Uh, we see a wreath motif here around the daisy and then even the daisy has hand quilting uh, shadowing the design. On the edges, the maker actually quilted some daisies in here and then we have some nice uh, floral motifs around that as well. So let's talk for a minute about the binding or the finishing, I should say. So the maker just stitched this on uh, and this looks like it was stitched on by machine. And if you can see, um, I'll put a picture on it of it. It is a raw edge from the backing. So that didn't fray at all over all these years. However, this binding obviously has come apart and isn't around the whole thing. Uh, there's some sections that are it's completely missing and um, it's probably something I will eventually just take off because it's not consistent even though it's really really pretty. So the condition of this quilt is in fair condition. There's some uh, stains but there aren't any holes. So let's take a look at the back because the back is also very unique. So with the back you can of course see the, the hand quilting even better but there are some puckering uh, and I think that's because of the material used. So we've talked about backings being sheets, we've talked about it being flannel and different non-traditional fabrics used on the back. This particular one is silk. It is so soft, I wish you could feel it and, and just cuddle it, you just wanna wrap yourself in, in it. So it's a very unusual backing and I'm assuming that's why we are seeing some of the puckers. Uh, even with laundering it, I'm sure there were some shrinkage issues too. So what lessons can we learn from this quilt? So the first thing is revisit those cross stitch patterns and cross stitch quilt kits. So you can get these types of kits at Hirschner's. Uh, I know some other places locally that sell them. I think even Walmart has some, but they are really cool, aren't they? And what a fun way to add some interest to your quilts. 
Next, the finishing on this quilt is so cool. Uh, I love that this maker added the fringe, even though it's kind of falling off. But what I really love is the maker kept the binding or the finishing, I should say, white. I think it would be tempting to pick up that green color and put it into the binding. And by not doing that, I, th I think it adds to the elegance of this quilt. And it's just stunning. Next, I know we've talked about non-traditional backings in the past, especially when we talk about sheets, uh, but maybe consider even a different material like a silk. It really makes this quilt soft and cuddly and wonderful. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. I have some really cool quilts coming up and I can't wait to share them with you. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing, giving me that thumbs up, even hitting the bell below to get notified when I have a new video going live. And of course, always commenting below as well. I love, love, love hearing from all of you. And I just love the community here on YouTube. Uh, makers are really supporting each other and it's wonderful. Have a great day. Make sure you take some time to sew and I'll see you soon. Bye.